And now to discuss more about the virus threat, we have with us Professor Amin Subandrio here joining us. He's the director of Eichmann Institute for Molecular Biology of Jakarta. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Now, the WHO have declared a public health emergency for the Zika virus. How bad is it, the situation? Globally? In Indonesia. Uh, in, in the world, globally. Yes, as uh, already declared by uh -huh. the DG, that in uh, Brazil in uh, particular, uh, thousands of uh, baby with uh, microencephaly was uh, uh, assumed born to a uh, Zika virus infected mother. But uh, of course, uh, there, are, there is no uh, strong scientific evidence yet, but we have to be very careful. Yeah, uh, the situation is uh, now uh, serious in, in that area, but since uh, the Zika virus is transmitted uh, by uh, the same mosquito, and it's IGPT, and the mosquito is everywhere in Indonesia. So we are uh, in the position of uh, probably similar to Brazil because we are the same uh, tropical country. Mm. But uh, currently in Indonesia, only one case has been identified last year. We're in in uh, from. Uh, from person uh, reside in Jambi area. Okay, so first of all, let's go through the process of how a person gets infected with Zika. Is it exactly the same as dengue or yes. how does it work? Zika virus is actually the same family uh, with uh, dengue virus. Mm. Uh, very close family with dengue virus. And it developed also similar clinical symptom, but uh, very, very mild compared to uh, dengue virus. Right. So that's why, uh, we don't have uh, uh, enough data about uh, Zika-infected person. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, apart from causing, uh, possibly causing microcephaly, the, uh, what are the other symptoms you get from a Zika-infected uh, uh, mosquito if you are bitten by one? Yes, of course, uh, first uh, fever, and then muscle ache, uh, red eyes, uh, mostly uh, self-limited. So in two or three days, uh, the fever disappeared and the person will uh, recover uh, completely. But uh, there is a risk of uh, another uh, disease caused by uh, in, uh, virus infection, like uh, neurological disorder. Uh, it has been reported in other countries. Right. Yeah, so uh, not only microcephaly, but also uh, that kind of uh, neurological disorder. Right. Um, uh, as, as, you, as you said, mm. it's also linked to another neuro neurological disorder. Um, there's one called the Guillain Barr syndrome. Guillain Barr, yes. Uh, could you explain more about this? Yes, Guillain Barr syndrome uh, is uh, believed to be caused by uh, uh, immune response to a viral infection. So not, so not only uh, Zika virus, uh, other virus also could, uh, could cause uh, Guillain Barr. And uh, uh, one of the symptoms of Guillain-Barre syndrome is uh, uh, paralyzed. Mm. So, and uh, severe one is if the uh, respiratory uh, nerve is affected, then the person cannot breathe. Right. So you're saying that a mosquito carrying the Zika virus could also uh, carry the Guillain-Barre syndrome as well, could give you that as well? Infection by Zika virus. Yes. 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 So that's possible. So. Possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's go uh, back to the to the finding of the, the, the Zika virus in Jambi. Yes. How how did this come about? Um, yeah. The finding of this infection in Jambi. Yes. If you remember, uh, December two thousand fourteen until uh, April two thousand fifteen, there was uh, an outbreak of dengue uh, virus in Jambi. And uh, hundreds of specimens were sent to our laboratory uh, to check uh, possible infection by other viruses. Mm -hmm. And we discovered that 103 uh, uh, samples were negative for dengue, for typhoid, for chikungunya, and uh, other virus. And uh, we continued the uh, process, the examination. And finally, we found one sample positive for Zika virus. And the sample is coming from a person, a, a young man, 27 years old. Uh, he is residing in Jambi. He is not traveling everywhere. Mm. 
positive, but he developed only very mild symptom. And since then, has there, any, has there been any other cases of Zika? So far, no. So, so he's completely cured. And are you saying yes. the risk of Zika from him mm -hmm. is completely gone? We cannot say that the Zika virus already uh, disappeared from Indonesia. Mm. Because, uh, as I mentioned before, that, that person is uh, residing in that area right. and not traveling. So uh, the virus is not uh, brought by him from other part of uh, Indonesia or from other country. So how did he get it? How did he get the Zika virus? We don't know yet. Uh, so uh, our assumption is the virus is already circulating. But we don't have any uh, evidence because uh, there was no uh, specific surveillance for Z Zika virus. Right. Uh, so allegedly the Zika virus um, uh, started in 1947. And mm -hmm. there were also reports that it, uh, it traveled to Malaysia in, 19, in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean that uh, since then it's been in the Southeast Asian region? For example, it, it reached to the, to the man in Jambi, mm -hmm. he was infected and you say that he never traveled outside. Mm -hmm. So has it been lingering in Indonesia all this time? In your Could be because we understand that infectious disease is a uh, disease without border. Mm. They can go everywhere. Yeah, uh, within a uh, few hours, it can move from one country to other country, even to the other part of the world yeah, uh, with the uh, effectiveness of uh, transportation. So uh, if uh, a virus already uh, present in one country, of course the neighboring countries is also uh, uh, have the same risk. Right. So that's why we, we have to uh, establish uh, collaboration with uh, many countries. To First of course we have to uh, build our capacity in predicting uh, the situation and then we have to be able to detect the presence of virus and if the virus is there then we have to respond. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about uh, the Zika virus and microcephaly. Mm. Um, the WHO said it's not completely confirmed mm. that it's linked, but there is a possible link. Could you explain this? Yes, because the, the finding of uh, microcephaly, uh, thousands of uh, babies with microcephaly uh, was uh, uh, founded at the same time when the Zika virus also identified. Mm. Yeah, uh, including in mothers, pregnant mothers. So uh, it is normal that uh, we assume that uh, there, there, there is or there are some uh, correlation, mm. but we have to prove because uh, scientifically we have to have the evidence that the virus could be isolated from that uh, individual mm -hmm. and then uh, infected to uh, other individual and develop the same symptom. That's, uh, we call it uh, Koch postulate. Right. Yeah, there is, there is a, uh, like a rule in, in, uh, in scientific term. Okay. So we have to prove that. Yeah. So it's not proven? Not proven. Probably we need uh, animal model or something like that. Right. Um, so now we're also facing a dengue outbreak as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a huge dengue outbreak. Um, how bad is it this year compared to last year, in your opinion? In some area, uh, because it is uh, the uh, because of the global warming and also the we start the rainy season, so the uh, mosqu mosquito breeding place is increasing. Mm. Uh, that's why uh, we found uh, dengue uh, cases in some uh, area. Although we 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 cannot say. It this is a, a real outbreak of dengue mm -hmm. yet, yeah. Uh, but every year, um, there, there's, al there's always a dengue outbreak. Exactly. And the government, um, does that mean that the government and the public are not doing enough to oh. prevent it? Yes, uh, the government has already trying hard to uh, convince the people to do, you, you understand the 3M, right? Menguras, mm -hmm. mengubur, uh, menutup. If uh, we, uh, perform that activity uh, effectively, mm -hmm. uh, almost certain that we could control the mosquito because we cannot we cannot eliminate a mosquito totally, mm -hmm. but we have to control. Then uh, that is a factor control. The second one is we have to 
uh, prevent from being bitten by the mosquito, right? So we have to use uh, a bed net or repellent, so, yeah. Mm. Then uh, from the overall picture, actually we encourage uh, the public to do the PHBS uh, in Indonesia, the uh, pola hidup uh, bersih dan sehat. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, I'm afraid we have to go to our last question now. Right. Uh, in, in your opinion, how big is the risk of the Zika virus landing in Indonesia? Say from a from a ranking of one to ten. In your opinion. Hmm. Because we have already identified Zika, Zika virus in Indonesia. So uh, as right. a as a as a scientist, uh, I I assume that uh, Zika virus already uh, circulating in Indonesia. But uh, the question whether it will become an outbreak or not depends on the uh, presence of the factor. The factor is here, so uh, the added safety. That's why we recommend that uh, we do the active surveillance from the mosquito, from the patient with uh, fever, mm -hmm. and also uh, active uh, case finding. Okay. Yes, that's important. Of course, uh, uh, in laboratory, we have to try to develop a uh, good diagnostic uh, system mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, cheap and simple to be applied in uh, remote area. Right. So let's yeah. just hope that it doesn't happen. Yes, of happen. course, we hope that Zika virus will not uh, make a big problem in Indonesia. Okay, Professor Amin, I'm okay. afraid that's all the time we have. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes.